Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Anna Vanston, and The Last of Us on HBO shocked fans of the video game with its faithful accuracy to the series, at times even replicating the game's dialogue and scenes shot for shot. And we loved it. But changes are inevitable and necessary when switching mediums, so today we're going to be looking at the show's top three biggest changes from the game and why they were made. Spoilers for the entire first game and first season of the show ahead. Number three, the changes to Joel's character. It's no surprise that in the video games, Joel has superhuman levels of invulnerability. With combat being such a central aspect of the game, he has to be able to take a bunch of bullets no problemo, heal at will, and run, crouch, and parkour to his heart's content. But in real life, if you take five bullets to the chest, a bandage around the arm probably won't do the trick. So the realistic effects of Joel's age and damaging life experiences were taken into account. Prior to the show airing, co-showrunner Craig Mazin revealed the toll that Joel's life would take on his health, saying he's hard of hearing on one side because of a gunshot, his knees hurt every time he stands. Up. I guess there's a tone where Tom Cruise can do anything, but I like my middle-aged people middle-aged. He also later said 55-year-olds can't crouch for more than like three minutes, tops, and then their back gives out. So his words, not mine. I think middle-aged people are strong and capable and can do anything they put their minds to, but I'm also never gonna grow old, so. But we see all of this realistic human fragility in things like Joel's knuckles staying injured and him only having finite energy, which makes injuries that much more serious. But there's a lot more to the choice to up Joel's vulnerability than that. After all, a lot of the combat was cut in the game to opt for relationship instead, and this is where we see the real toll of Joel's health in action. Joel's physical limitations make him terrified that he'll be unable to protect Ellie. He begins having panic attacks that amplify that fear, and when he's desperately trying to convince Tommy to take her because he thinks she'll be safer with him, he stresses his physical shortcomings, saying he was too slow and deaf to hear that guy that Ellie had to kill, that he freezes in fear, and that Tommy is younger than him and still strong. Joel's vulnerability, which first manifests physically and then emotionally make him a much more relatable and empathetic character and allows for touching moments that we didn't get in the game, like this confession to Tommy. Sometimes when you love a show or movie, it's not enough to have seen it. You need some merch to commemorate the occasion and Nerd Riot's got you covered. If the finale of The Last of Us left you hungry for more, pick up a Lunch of Us tea, available in cream or black, featuring the logo of Todd's Steakhouse from episode eight of the series. Don't eat there though, just don't do that. Unless you're a cannibal, in which case, bon appetit, baby. If you're stoked for the upcoming John Wick movie, Nerd Ride has a whole line of John Wick shirts to make you feel like you've got a seat at the high table. There's the Bobby Yaga tea, a gun chucks tea, and a tea for the high table itself, proclaiming, I have served, I will be of service. Get them now and you'll be able to wear them to opening night. And then also the next weekend when you see John Wick chapter four for the second time. And of course, if you're obsessing over the Mandalorian right now, there's a whole line of Mando merch in the Way collection, with tees, beanies, hats, and even stuff for kids. To get your hands on the merch you need, head to nerdriot.shop today. Join the riot over at nerdriot.shop. Number two, Sam. Sam's character changed quite a bit in the transition from game to TV. So one at a time, let's look at each change and how and why it came about. The first change is that Sam is significantly younger in the show. In the show, he's eight years old, and in the games, he's 13, about a year younger than Ellie. Making Sam younger created the opportunity for someone to look up to Ellie like she looked up to Joel. The age difference also allows Ellie to feel more of a sense of protectiveness and responsibility for Sam being the older one. It makes the pain of not being able to protect him in the end that much worse, and arguably ups the pain on the audience's end too since he's just a kid. Another change they made was making Sam deaf in the show. Neil Druckmann and Craig Mazin said in HBO's The Last of Us podcast that there were a few reasons for this. One was that it differentiated their relationship from Joel's and Ellie's more. Scenes with Henry and Sam were inherently more quiet and intimate, and not being able to hear the dialogue also made the audience audience become more engaged in those scenes as well. Another was that it created a larger reliance on his brother for Sam, and likewise, a bigger need to protect Sam for Henry. And sharing a language in a world where it would be extremely uncommon to come across someone who also spoke ASL only serves to strengthen their already strong familial bond. It also inadvertently led to further representation on the show, and shows a post-apocalyptic world from yet another perspective that the audience might not have even considered. Finally, Sam having leukemia is unique to the show. As we find out in episode 5, Henry ratted out the location of the leader of the Kansas City Rebels to Fedra in exchange for medication for Sam's leukemia. Henry and Sam serve as foils for Joel and Ellie, and giving Sam's situation life or death 
mistakes creates a parallel between the choice Henry makes to put his brother above the group and Joel's decision to save Ellie over potentially saving humanity. There are other smaller changes with Henry and Sam, but maybe that's for another video. Number one, Bill and Frank. Bill and Frank's story was by and large the biggest shock that fans of the game got when they tuned into episode three. And not because Bill was gay. That was the case in the games too. But in the game, Bill is a brash, crass survivalist who lives on his own. When Ellie and Joel find Bill, they're looking for a car battery, and the following gameplay is action-packed as the three of them gun their way through hordes of infected in search of that battery. They arrive at a house where Joel and Bill discover Frank's body, who has decided to end his life via hanging after being bitten. Despite being Bill's partner, Joel has never met or heard of Frank, but finds a letter from him in the same house in which Frank says some pretty harsh things towards Bill, including that he hated the town and Bill's guts, and would rather die trying to leave than spend another day with him. Bill reacts coldly to the letter, and when they get the battery working and Joel and Ellie leave, Bill is still very much alive, and that's the last we see of him. So you might understand why the show was a pretty big shift. But why did they decide to change this section of the game to instead focus on the couple's life together and alter Bill's fate? Druckmann and Mason gave several reasons for the changes. One of the more straightforward answers is that the action-packed gameplay just didn't work as well for the television medium. And the first couple of episodes were so go, go, go that they felt like they should take a breather this episode and explore a happier story amidst all this tragedy. Don't get me wrong, it's still extremely bittersweet, but as Bill says in the episode, this isn't the tragic suicide at the end of the play, then saying, I'm old, I'm satisfied, and you were my purpose. Their story of falling in love and choosing to die on their own terms is a success story in this world and shows some light moments in this otherwise grim atmosphere. And Bill's relationship with Frank provided an opportunity to instead explore the larger theme that they wanted to focus on for the show, love and the beauty, pain, and inherent danger that comes from it. And in turn, give Bill an arguably happier ending than in the game. After all, even though Bill lives on in the game, Druckmann and Mason were constantly exploring the question, what is this life for and how best can we live it? And in the game, who knows how fulfilling Bill's life was living by himself with the one person he cared about having died. And honestly, players of the game weren't all that invested in if Bill was happy or not, because he was kind of a dick in the game. Hey, Bobby Fischer, don't touch anything on that board. He mainly served as a sort of comedic relief, but I feel like a lot of people read Frank's letter and were like, yeah, I get it. <laughs> and then drove off into the sunset without a second thought. So why not instead opt for an incredibly moving storyline that really leaves you thinking? As Druckmann said on the HBO podcast, the gain of the change outweighed the cost. Another reason for the change was that it was part of what ultimately led to Joel's final decision in the season. Bill is a lot like Joel. Both have a healthy dose of skepticism and distrust from the outside world and are only concerned about protecting the one person they love. And both of them get more and more afraid as their love grows. Bill apologizes for growing older faster than Frank and is terrified that it means he won't be able to protect him. Likewise, when Joel is trying to convince Tommy to take Ellie, a big part of his fear stems from feeling like he's getting older and weaker. Frank and Ellie, meanwhile, are their counterparts in that they want to share their light with others and hold much more hope in their hearts for the world. Bill can't live without Frank in the same way that Joel can't live without Ellie. And it's not a coincidence that in Bill's letter to Joel, he says that men like them have a job to save the ones they love and God help any mother who might stand in their way. While Bill might have been talking about Tess, his message planted a seed in Joel's head to protect and save Ellie at all costs. And that's unfortunately all the changes I have time to cover today. There are obviously many more differences between the game and the show, and if you want a part two, let us know in the comments. Until then, you can follow me on Twitter at It's Anna Vanston, and follow and subscribe to New Rockstars at New Rockstars for more breakdowns of everything you love. Later.